This is my iPad. It's my most beloved device, but it has one problem. Ever since I got one five years ago, it was kind of useless for coding or designing websites. But now it's 2023. How we design websites has changed a lot. So I thought I'd set myself a challenge. Can I use the iPad for an entire week for web design and development. Today's day one. I know that in the past, browsers were restrictive of things like mobile devices, iPads, and browsers that just weren't supported. I wanna see if this has changed. The website I wanna try out now is called Figma. You may have heard of it. In the past, I couldn't access it on my iPad to edit or modify designs, only to view them. Okay, this is cool. You can edit now designs. You can move them around, you can um, edit them, you can customize them. I can select this text here. I could double tap it and write something new. This is something I couldn't do. So this is really cool. The fact that I've got the full editor now on an iPad makes designing a website much easier. Though the one difficulty I have is clicking and using my fingers to move elements around. It's just not that intuitive and I'd rather use a mouse and keyboard, which now apparently the iPad supports. Let me try that out. So here I've got the, what you call magic keyboard. It's an accessory that came with the iPad, though it's a little bit expensive, but it is both a trackpad as well as a keyboard. And now I can start modifying my designs and I can type them however I want. And I do have the little mouse cursor here. So it definitely makes selecting items and moving them across much easier than it was before. Can I say this is the optimal way to design a website? Maybe not. I prefer using a mouse. But the thing is that this is my favorite Logitech uh, mouse. It's a mouse that has Bluetooth. And I'm gonna see if I can connect it up and use it instead of a trackpad. It's just how I prefer to design. It works. And I must say that having a mouse to move things along is way better than just using a trackpad for me personally. Though I do wish that the iOS settings allow me to change the sensitivity of the mouse. It's something I couldn't do, but maybe with DPI settings, I could hard code the DPI to be lower and that might update the sensitivity. All right, so today I figured out that the iPad can in fact be used for designing websites. It can run Figma exactly the same as any laptop or computer machine. And I think this is great. Day two. And today I want to create a brand new design for a website rather than just a modify an existing one. Now I'm gonna do that on Figma. And the first problem I ran into was that, that I didn't have the internet. I used my phone to connect Bluetooth to the iPad and then I started designing. Now, one thing with the designing was it was still hard to use the trackpad and one thing with the keyboard was there was no escape button. I'll be honest, this was a bit annoying. I kept hitting this key here, which just added or deleted the text I had. I tried to modify the global key to work as an escape, but that didn't work. So I decided to escape this restaurant and try something different. One aspect where the iPad definitely shines is in looking for inspiration for web design. One of my favorite websites to visit is Dribbble and just searching through there and having a look at different designs of that would be useful for building out my own design is very enjoyable using a touchscreen, taking screenshots, selecting what I want, cropping it. It's not as easy to do this on a laptop, but the iPad definitely makes this much easier. Another thing I like is the fact that I can use the iPad outdoors. When outside, often the screen of laptops are just not bright enough to really be usable. The iPad, on the other hand, has a thousand nits. This means its screen is quite bright. It's hard to show this on a video, but for the most part, the one regret I have is the fact that my screen protector is a paper-like, and this means there's a bit of a reflection or glare from the sun if I don't angle it just right, like this example just here. It was nice though, getting outside, because a lot of the time I'm just coding indoors and it's not always healthy to sit in one spot in a dark room coding 24-7. Heading back to Figma, I didn't really use the touchpad. I found it a little bit tedious using my fingers to size up different elements and even the trackpad wasn't great and I was already missing my mouse which I'm used to using every day on my computer. So it's day three and today I'm going to be loading up Wix Studio. Now this is a no coding platform. And for the most part, this is what I've been using for the last year or two to build all my websites. This will be a great test to see just how much the iPad can now do. Uh, so first I'll log in. And in the past, I think this didn't work on Chrome on the iPad. I'll be interested to see if this works and if a keyboard or a mouse will help the process too. I did like having my keyboard and mouse connected earlier. That made the process much easier. So here I can select edit website. I'm not able to use this just yet. So that's not great, but let's see if I can hack this to let me use it anyway. I'm gonna select request desktop site and see if that, that does work. That does work, look. 
it's loading up now. It's definitely loading up. So I guess you can trick the system. You can get it to work. And now I guess it's time to see what that experience is like. So here's the website and here's Wix Studio. Uh, now I've got my inspector on the right. I've got add elements here on the left and the touch experience, I guess, isn't entirely optimized. I can select elements there. So that's actually inspected this element over here. But I think I'm going to need a mouse to get this up and running. I'm going to actually connect up this mouse over here. But now I've got the mouse. I can actually move over and hover on different elements. This is much better. I think I had a section here I was customizing before. Yes, here it is. Yeah, I can definitely move around this section. I can edit it. So that kind of gives me a lot of confidence that I could actually build this website in here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that today. I'm going to see if I can build up this design. It's not as good. Let, let me actually try the um, the pen. So the pen experience, it doesn't particularly work as well as a mouse. A mouse definitely works much better. And it didn't take me very long before I decided to connect up my keyboard and mouse to start making this website on the iPad. This is where I encountered a weird issue where I would scroll over the page. This means I would scroll far to the left or far to the right and it would kind of snap. I know it's a feature I like normally when I'm browsing on the iPad, but for designing stuff in Figma or Editor X, it wasn't great. Day three and pretty much everywhere I go now, I bring the magic keyboard along with me as well as the mouse because I really can't work without those two. And while the iPad doesn't weigh much, when you add the magic keyboard, which is half a kilogram or more, as well as a mouse and all the other accessories I might want to take with me, I find that it weighs more than a laptop, which isn't optimal. One other thing is that sometimes I found the copy paste button not working the way I intended. So a lot of the times I'd have to right click on the actual element and then copy it manually and then paste it. It's been seven days now and I think I've got my answer. Would I use an iPad for designing websites and building them? Maybe not just yet. I think that the iPad has definitely come a long way in the last five years, but my personal favorite thing for using it is for things like note taking, browsing the web, and generally using it as it is intended. In terms of using it for website design, I think it still has a little bit of a way to go because it's just much easier to use a laptop or a computer to do some of these tasks. It's a shame because it's got so much potential. And I think there is a little bit to be said about some software providers just providing additional support to be able to use the iPad as a legitimate device for work. I think this is why certain applications like Concepts, which I use for note-taking, work so well, while other applications like the Figma app literally have no functionality besides a viewing a design which isn't helpful, which is why I was loading it in the web browser. So did I miss anything? Do you guys have any comments? Let me know below. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video.